Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Okay, so what I have is my new Lexus. Yes, a luxury brand. A Lexus RX 330. I just bought this car. I'm really liking it. I'm gonna do a review on this car uh, a little bit later, but right now I got a problem. All right, I've got a code PO333 on my Lexus 2005 RX 330. That code means that the knock sensor, number two, two knock sensors on the V6 engine, they are under there somewhere. Uh, one of them is um, giving a poor reading, a high voltage reading, which is setting the engine code on the car. And of course, once the engine code is set, your traction control is no longer operating, and also you have reduced power uh, because it goes into limp mode, so you can't really drive easily with that code in the computer. Now you can clear the code, but it will just keep coming back because you got a bad sensor. Most likely. You can take that off, but there's two sensors. One sensor is bad, the other sensor is okay. So here's a trick that I read on a Lexus form, and I'm just going to check and see if it works. And here's what we're going to do. We're gonna to go to the ECU, which is behind here somewhere. Somewhere behind here. And uh, once we get there, we're gonna find the two wires that are for the two sensors. One is a black wire, one is a white wire. I don't know how to identify those wires exactly, but that's what we're gonna do. And then we're going to use the feed from the good sensor, which is sensor number one, and splice it into the feed for the bad sensor, sensor number two. This will fool the computer into thinking that both sensors are giving the proper reading. I know, I know. Probably the best idea is to replace the sensor, but uh, that's a big job, a lot of money, and I'm just gonna give this a try, just for now, just so that I can carry on driving my luxury Lexus RX330. Okay, so the glove box has these little uh, thingamadooies. They fit in here. Like this. And you just rotate them and then they will come out. And then you can get the glove box down to this position, but it's being held on by a wire right there. A wire. So we're undoing this screw to get that wire out. And because of the limited space here, I'm using one of my L-shaped or Z-shaped. Um, screwdrivers here. It's a Phillips head screw and so we're taking this out very very slowly. Once I get this out I should be able to drop the glove box down and somehow get it out. I don't know how. I just bought this car. I've had it for two days and I get a check engine light. Not happy about that. But this is a problem that happens to Lexus's and so therefore this will hopefully take care of the problem, at least temporarily. The glove box is out. Had to take off the lower panel, which goes underneath here, and that just clips out at the front, like clips out and then out. And as for the glove box, I had to sort of loosen this plastic to get access to a bolt here and a bolt up here. And then it came out. And there we see, we can see everything now. Wow. All right. This is your ECU computer for, for the whole car. Now, which one do I, which wire do I have to, I have no idea. Oh, and also when you take the glove blocks out, or the, the lower under panel has a little electrical connector for the, the footwell light, and then, you have a, uh, another connector that goes to glove box over here. Take those out, glove box comes right out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is what you call a hack. It's not a, it's not a definitive and final solution, and it is advisable to say that this may not be the right thing to do, so proceed with caution. You don't have to do this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is simply cut out the feed from the bad knot sensor, and put the feed from the good knot sensor to both inputs on the ECU, if you know what I mean. So the ECU will believe that it's getting an input from knock sensor one and an input from knock sensor two, 
and that everything's fine. But really, the inputs will be just from one knock sensor. So of course, you have simply have to cut a wire, splice two together, bing bang, and the job is done. Now originally this hack came out for the RX300, the model before this one, and so the computer wires are a little bit different. On that one it's like two clear wires that you put together or a black and clear wire you put together. But on this car it, the location is different and the colors of the wire are different. So that's why I'm making this video specifically for RX330 owners. Uh, specifically 2005 so that they know which wires that they should be messing with now the idea behind the hack is that your car is actually not really knocking now of course if it's really knocking if you really have pre-ignition or a problem in your cylinder you've got to get that taken care of but if you have a knock sensor that has gone bad your engine's still fine but the knock sensor is giving too high a reading too much too much voltage then this hack could work for you and it will allow you time until you can find the time and the money to do the proper job of replacing that knock sensor okay so this is the ecu from a 2005 rx 330 and there's a number of plugs and they come out quite easily like that just pull down on the tab here and they come right out you got you got one, two, space, three, four, and five. Okay, you see those two wires right in the corner of this connector? The red wire and the black wire. I believe those are the two wires we're looking for. One of them is the input from knock sensor one, and the other one is the input from knock sensor two. With a P0333 code, knock sensor two is the one that is giving the high inaccurate reading. Now if you have a, now if you have a different code, of course, you might want to splice uh, and get rid of the input from knock sensor one. It depends on what code you're getting, but in my case it was code PO333. Take this connector out. <clears throat> And the red wire, second from top left, is knock sensor bank number two. The black wire at the very top of the connector, top left, is knock sensor number one. So in my case, I'm getting bad readings from knock sensor number two. So I'm gonna cut the red wire and take the feed from the black wire and plummet into the red wire. Okay, I'm cutting the red wire. This is a very scary moment, but uh, I feel that um, maybe if I cut this wire, the bomb might go off. I don't know. Oop. Okay, the bomb didn't go off. Cut the wire. Now I'm gonna feed it into the black wire. So I've gotta take off some of the insulation. I'm gonna take off some of the insulation on the red wire and then I'm going to solder them all together, which is the best way to join wires. I know there's other connectors you can buy that would join these together right here, but I prefer solder as a permanent connection. Okay, as you can see, I have bared the wires. Now I'm gonna join the red wire to the black wire. Again, the red wire is knock sensor two, black wire is knock sensor one. So that means that the input into the ECU will all be from knock sensor number one right here. Ooh-wee, look at that. Bye, Joe, I think I did it. Okay, we just wait till it's a little cool. It cools down pretty quick. And that is a solder joint. I don't know if I'd call it perfect, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So now we just wrap this up with black tape and also wrap up the end of the red wire knock sensor two, bad non knock sensor two, and we'll be ready to rock here. Okay, the wires are wrapped and soldered, so it's not the perfect wrap job, but anyway, there we go. Now we just plug this right back in, like that. Plug this one right back in, like that, till they make a clicking noise. And this, this part of the job is done. Now, is it gonna work? Don't know. All right, the car is running fine. No check engine lights. 
no fires, everything's good. So all I gotta do is put everything back together and over the long term, we'll see how things go. All right, there you have it. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.